You're all very welcome here this evening from the library on behalf of Carlo Library Services. We are here for the launch of the DVD, A Tullow Story, PJ Duffy, 90 plus years serving the people of Tullow and beyond. This film was made to coincide with Arnold Mahan's 50 years as proprietor, and we are honoured that Mr. Mahan is here with us for the launch. I now introduce the local author, Mr. Jimmy O'Toole, to launch the DVD. So, over to you, Jimmy. Thanks very much. Terms like local author scare the life out of me. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> I'll get on with it. Um, First of all, uh, when Christy asked me to do this um, launch, I really was delighted because, you know, my family connections with Duffy's go back a long way and I have memories of being in there on a very frequent basis. And the reason was my mother was a professional dressmaker. So literally, and I don't think I'm exaggerating, and I checked it with Annie there last week, she probably was in there every Saturday night because there was material to be purchased, there was thread to be purchased, there was wool, all the usual stuff. So my memory of uh, Duffy's, as I say, goes back a long, long way. I've had the great pleasure of viewing the, the, the Tullow story. And, you know, it's so well made. It's made with a sense of affection and respect. Um, Undoubtedly a great highlight is the interview with Arnold himself. I said it to him here earlier, <laughs> you know, he captured 50 years of trading since the late 60s. And mind you, hasn't that been a revolution? Yeah. An absolute revolution. I'm going to tell a quick story about my grandfather. Where we're standing here tonight was previously owned by John Duffy of Hackettstown. No relationship between P.J. Duffy and John Duffy. Um, but they owned this yard. I'm not sure when they shut down, maybe in the 70s. But whenever Grandfather would come home from Tullow on a Saturday evening, maybe having brought us, my brothers, myself in for a haircut, he might say, do you know who I met in the brewery yard? <laughs> and it was here. This was known as the brewery yard. Now, I, I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm Terrified of telling even the whitest of a white lie here tonight because there's so many familiar faces from Tullow, I'll be caught on it straight away. But there's two breweries in Tullow, and one of them was here. And one of the brewing families were the Roaches. And the Roaches, they, they are li their lineal descendants are still with us out in Ratbon, and that's Huey Murphy and his family. They were the Mac, uh, um, a Roach, Alice Roach, married a McNally from County Monaghan and the line came down then, Murphy. Anyhow, so th that's a little bit of history about here. But talking about revolutions, grandfather worked for a, a merchant who was down there where the Harrington bookies offices, there was a, a merchant there, a lady, and uh, he used to bring two or possibly three horses to Roundwood with cabbage plants. This area is well renowned for producing cabbage plants. And from there he went to Arklow where he picked up loads of coal and they were brought back. Now this is one heck of a journey. Tullow, Roundwood, and again Arnold is excellent in the telling, and, and Christie in the telling of the story, I think, no sorry, it was in Christie's narration, of describing how Francis Barrington would leave Tullow, get the train to Dublin, get the mail boat across, and then travel to Manchester. It was a huge trek. But anyway, Grant, the, to, to finish the story with Grandfather, that he was doing that around 1900 and pre-1900. He was born here in Tullabeg in 1881. The Cistercian brothers had been doing exactly the same thing, drawing charcoal from Arklow to Grange Ford, where the Flynn House is now. That was a, a, a lay monastery of the Cistercian Monastery in Baltinglass. So things hadn't changed in 700 years. Grandfather died in 1970 by which time men had landed on the moon and the Boeing 747 was already in the air. So there was a revolution and I think you had another revolution in the retail trade. Anyway, I'll get on to the subject at hand. Um, I suppose I just jotted a few notes. You know, th this story about Duffy's, this is not just about any shop. It's an, alt an altogether absorbing account of the ownership and trading history 
of the PJ Duffy drapery business in Tullow over a period of almost 150 years. It was a shop, as I've said already, that was very familiar to uh, the O'Toole's through my mother. Um, the credit for this marvellous project goes to filmmaker John Murphy, who was very ably assisted by Christy McQuinn and his wife Mary, whose narration makes the film an absolute delight to watch. The gathering of photographs and other archive material would impress any researcher. And the excellent use of this material has created both a memorable and very valuable piece of local history. Just to briefly run down through, through the um, history of the building. The first we know of this building was that Philip and Elizabeth Lansbury were trading here in 1911 as a drapery. Frances Barrington continued when she took over in 1912 and PJ Duffy purchased the business in 1925 having served his time in uh, Castle Comer and uh, he was a native of uh, Roscommon of course. Interestingly enough, a Patrick Duffy was buried in Ballahadreen, County Roscommon this afternoon and I'm intrigued with sort of connection because I love connections. Just talking about that shop, now for example I love to think about who might have been customers there over the last 100 years, not just 50 in Arno's time. Well, if we start now, Sheer Sharon was probably often in that shop. <laughs> I'm wondering, was Kevin Barry ever in that shop? Reared largely uh, between Rockville and, and uh, Hackettstown. And, you know, people would have gravitated towards Tullo in those areas. Uh, I mean, it's often said that the catchment area of Tullo was easterly rather than westerly because you had Carlo dominating the retail trade on that side. Um, for example, the granddaughter of the Duke of Wellington would have walked across that street many times, pre-Arnold Mahan. She died, she was a member of the Brigidine Order and she died in 1903. But it's fascinating to think of the people, in fact the Duke's daughter, Jane Hanlon, would have certainly, she was married to William O'Callaghan who owned the big uh, shop here on the corner of uh, Mill Street and uh, the square. Um, she would have passed by. So as I said, it's intriguing to think of the people. For example, did Mrs. Olive Hall of Kellistown, a regular enough visitor to um, Buckingham Palace, come here and buy some clothes in Duffy? <laughs> she just lived in Kellistown. Um, there's a reference uh, by Christie in the narration again to the Kennedy era, which would have been the, of, as we know, the early 60s. Now when he mentioned that, I thought, now is he in onto this story about Shalala? Because the seventh Earl Fitzwilliam married, but then cast his eye towards a girl called Kathleen Kennedy. And Kathleen Kennedy, of course, was a sister of John F. Kennedy. And they were killed in an accident, an air accident near Paris in 1948. So, uh, an interesting little uh, Kennedy connection with, with this area. Actually, when Kennedy visited Ireland in uh, 1963, June I think 1963, I remember we were weeding bees out on Sam Thorpe's farm out there in uh, Ratbon, Grange Ford area. And uh, remember the four helicopters flying over the field that day quite well. So, um, anyway, that's another aside. Um, the, just carrying on there, about, just to say a little bit about John Murphy. You know, to undertake a project like this and make such an enormous, enormous success of it is a terrific achievement. Now, John's background, he was born in London, uh, brought up in Rochdale in Lancashire, and he's the con his connection with Tullow began in the 60s and 70s when he came here on holiday. He worked in the printing industry for 20 years and spent 34 years in both the regular and reserve defence forces. He has written many articles for the Irish Defence Magazine. He has made many uh, uh, films on the Tullow area, which he's very proud now to call home. He's an events uh, employee at Rathwood. And, as I said, he's made a fantastic contribution to the town of Tullow in the making of this uh, wonderful, absolutely wonderful um, film. 
I think another place that was mentioned there, by the way, by Arnold, was M Malloy Shop in Carlow. Now, the Malloy Shop has great connections with the Grange area because that's where Michael Malloy was born in the 1840s. He died in 1926. Of course, he was the last MP to sit in the House of Commons for the Carlow constituency. Um, his shop was known as the Irish Woollen Warehouse in Tullow Street, Carlow, and Arnold's family, and he tells a lovely story about how the family would shop there for all their, there was a very large store in Carlow there in, in, in Tullow Street. Uh, they would shop there and maybe you might, just like all farmers and, and at that, that time, people ran accounts and they'd pay maybe every twice a year. And uh, it's not imaginable now uh, where things have changed. But that, it's just an interesting little aside and a lovely story and one of many lovely stories. But I'm going to wrap up now with this little story. Arnold worked in Max in Carlow. And, you know, Phil, he was a very experienced man uh, when he bought Tullow. But he realised on day one that he only half knew the business because Max was an exclusive man shop. So he arrived over here and he had uh, women's wear and everything to deal with. And he used a lovely term. He said, um, well, the, f the phrase got in my head. Oh, yeah. He said, uh, you know, it was a steep learning curve. <laughs> well, do you know something, Arnold? In 1968, I was up in the vocational school trying to learn shorthand and typing. And I was with a class of 23 girls. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll explain the relevance of that now. Well, I think Arnold and his staff has done fantastic work for countless curves in this town. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, thank you, Jimmy. That was absolutely brilliant. And it's lovely to see so many people here today. We weren't expecting anything like the crowd that turned up, as you can see. And I'd like to thank Martin for bringing chairs from all sorts of corners there. I'd like to thank Margaret and Monica and Jean from the library staff for hosting this this evening. It's all part of the mission of the local library service. And it's wonderful to see so many past connections between staff and customers with Duffy's here in Tullow. Um, I've always felt that this was a very unique shop and back in 2014 I brought my camera in and I asked Arnold's permission to mind if I take a few photographs because I really felt that if it ever closed it, it, there had to be a record somewhere and like it is so unique you'll never see anywhere where people sell behind the counters anymore you never see the machine that sends the money across. <laughs> you never see all of that sort of thing. And uh, you certainly don't get the standard of Service. compassion and key the, from the staff, the, the really lovely staff, without exception, that have worked there. And I can think back to the very early 1950s when my bro mother brought me in there too. Uh, you know, it w every mother in this area brought their children in there. <laughs> And it is absolutely wonderful to think that that shop is still going and that we now have a record on film of the shop that is available for history and hope the shop will continue. Um, one big problem I had going into that shop was, I would say, going there for nearly over 60 years, but I never saw the upstairs, what Jimmy was talking about, the ladies section. <laughs> never there. And Mary, my wife, asked me to drop something or collect something one day. And I said, God, I couldn't go up there. <laughs> <laughs> so eventually she said, you have to go up. So I, doing what I'm told, I went up. So I went up the stairs. Connie was up there. Antoinette was there. And I said to them, this is the first time I'm up there. I've ever been up here, I said. And they said, people have been known to come down from here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so... That was it. Uh, I was, so when I went back with the camera to take the photograph, no problem going up there. <laughs> I'd often been up the stairs on the other side with shoes and so on, you know. Uh, when I heard that John uh, was doing this, he said, he came to me, he was working completely independently. He said, I have a project, he says, <coughs> that will be dear to your heart. And when I uh, had, to, he had heard that I had taken the photographs, and I said, gosh, that's great. And he was taking a film. So it really was wonderful that he was actually going to take this project on. Um, the, 
memories came flooding back. I remember, for example, when I did my leaving cert, I remember uh, going up there and asking Mr. Duffy for a reference for a job, uh, which I got and I'm possibly at home somewhere still. Um, I remember then getting, uh, been lucky enough to get a scholarship to university and my mother went down to Duffy's and she bought me a Foxford rug 55 years ago. <laughs> and there it is. <laughs> as good as ever. Just to be able to sell it for you. <laughs> he said you could sell it for me, yes. Um, the, the thing about John, he has left no stone unto uh, unturned in this uh, search, in his research and his fi in filmmaking. He spent very many hours in the early morning and late at night, and his standard is absolutely the highest. And Mary and I are absolutely honoured to be involved in this venture. We can testify to his enthusiasm, his dedication, and his ability to with which he approached the subject. Uh, we decided that we would get up at 6 o'clock in the morning and go down and do some filming because it would be very quiet. So we arrived down there and John had his camera there. Next thing, a Guinness lorry arrived <laughs> <laughs> to, uh, to, to the pub there, to the, to, to the, to the Myers's and left their engine running. Then they took out all the big kegs and banged them down the floor. <laughs> and John was thrown up his eye to heaven. So we waited and waited then the, 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 the lorry ran away, or drove away, and next thing two women came from opposite directions with the dogs, who decided they were going to have a fight. <laughs> this is all hasks in the morning, seven o'clock. You wouldn't believe the amount of people walk around till the hour of the morning. <laughs> I think I, I saw people out, you know, even somebody in this room, I saw them out uh, for their walk. I, mean, I think it might have been Billy Brown, I don't know, they saw them out, out, out walking at a very early hour of the morning. Um, I would like to uh, say a few words about Jimmy O'Toole and we're very proud to have Jimmy launching this tonight. He received his primary education in Grange National School and his secondary education in the Patrician School here in Tullow where he was a few years behind me. On leaving time school he spent a short time selling enlarging screens for television in Dublin. Now the reason I know that is because he slept on our floor. <laughs> Joe Byrne and I had the flat in Dublin at the time so he slept on the floor and he never arrived the next weekend at all because he had enrolled in the vocational school uh, for his short and in typing. And when he finished that he got a work, a job with the Wicklow people and he was a, a reporter there for many years and we often heard him on the radio as well and uh, he did a, a great uh, career in, in, in journalism and he changed direction and went into the building trade afterwards with his brothers and a very successful career in construction. Of course, he's best known for all the books that he's written about the Tullow area and the Carlow area. Carlow Gentry, Carlow's uh, International Achievers, Woolsey Book Books, the ones uh, about the um, who's who in Carlow. Uh, I think he must have about ten books written at this stage. I don't know where he fitted so much into his life. and We're very honoured that he's here tonight. Uh, I'd like to thank the, the library service for, for uh, hosting this event. And uh, I hope I haven't forgotten anybody. Um, we are absolutely amazed that so many people turned up. And I'm delighted to see so many past connections with Duffy's here because it is an absolutely unique. Uh, I won't name any because I can see the links right around here and I'd be afraid I forget somebody. So, uh, John, I'm going to say a few words now at this stage. I'm con this is John's. <laughs> Uh, guys, I'm looking around the room tonight and I'm seeing a, a lot of familiar faces from, uh, from, from my past. Some old friends out there, work colleagues, and thank you all for being here. Um, four months, perhaps a little longer, of painstaking work and really worth the effort. Um, it is a Tullow story and a story that needed to be told. I'd like to begin by thanking a few people. Uh, my long-suffering wife uh, over here, <laughs> Manika, thank you so much for your patience and tolerance uh, of the last five months. 
Um, Christy and Mary, what can I say? Well, uh, when we spoke all those months ago, um, I say you have a good speaking voice, right? And we really need it on tape, okay? And he willingly volunteered for that job. And thank you for that, because it just makes our film all the better. The next thing then, of course, his lovely wife Mary, who became a makeup artist uh, at times and made sandwiches and drinks and various things. And a very big thank you to you, Mary. Um, Arnold, a big thank you to you for your enthusiasm for the project. Um, Patrick Duffy, the previous owner of the business, who we had the honour to meet uh, last Sunday night. Uh, Eileen Doyle, thank you so much for your help. Antoinette Sutton, I'm looking for you there, but I'm sure you're here. She is. Yeah, yeah. Antoinette. <coughs> uh, Ollie Murphy, Anne Byrne, the current staff of Duffy's shop, thank you so much for your help. Canis Kelly, uh, he's not here tonight, but uh, he gave us a very, very detailed interview in the very early part of making the film. My appreciation to you for uh, your contribution. My aunt, uh, Jen Dawson, I can see her over there. Jennifer Murphy, thank you very much for your encouragement very early on in the film, a former employee of uh, PJ Duffy's. Connie Dunn, God bless her, uh, gave us a great contribution and her words are spoken by Mary. Uh, Regina and Camilla Hanley, who gave us a, a picture that we really treasured and you're going to see on the film. Henry Edge, thank you so much for your uh, contribution. Henry is a grand nephew of Francis Barrington. Anthony Kenny, uh, Yvonne Smith, Bon Claudie Library. If you're here, thank you so much for your help in the research. Tullow Historical Society, thank you for your efforts. Mary Marr of the T Tullow Historical Society, who gave us the information on the Tullow railway line, which was an immense help to, to us at that particular moment. Thank you, Mary. The Reverend Norman Gamble, who's not here tonight, but is responsible for the keeping of the ar uh, archive of, uh, of the railway, which we received the information and it just makes our film a whole lot better. My mother-in-law, Mrs. Martha Flynn, for uh, allowing us to film in certain locations uh, and refreshments. Thank you so much. Um, to Elsie Murphy, um, who gave us a major um, interview at the very end of the film. Joe and Therese and all the McNabb family, thank you so much uh, for your help at this time. Um, yeah, I also have you down again for spell check. Thank you, Mary, for that. <laughs> Mary Johnson, thank you for uh, your uh, contribution. Ursula O'Farrell, she's not here tonight. Jimmy O'Toole, we're very honoured to have you here tonight and thank you very much for your contribu contribution. And now the main man, okay, because it's not about Christy nor I tonight, it's about Arnold. Arnold, just to say to you, thank you for 50 plus years of service to our town. You have given employment and all of your current and former staff speak very highly of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now, I'd like to present you with this in dedication to your long career here in Tullow. Thank you very much. And those are thank you. You're good to go now. Yeah. Oh. My, uh, my contribution won't be near as good or as elegant as what we've been listening there, but it's just a little memories of what I had over the years. Um, I'm not a public speaker, never was, and wouldn't be able to complete the details. But the first thing I want to say is to thank. Paddy Duffy, 50 years ago, he passed on to me 
the business above. And it was a very successful and a very vibrant business. And it, um, instead going, uh, he provided also the staff to run the place. And we carried on for the first year. Um, All Fools Day in 1968 was a momentous day in my life as I came to work in PJ Duffy's. I worked in Max Carlo, a very good men's outfitters. I thought I knew it all. I was a brash young fella who was full of confidence, but it was a culture shock for me as I didn't know anything about ladies' wear, footwear, haberdashery, accounts, but with the help of a resident and competent staff, we got through the first year. I found the customers and people of Tolo and surrounding areas very nice and very easy to deal with. They were regular and loyal to the shop. Um, that, at that time there was no multiples, no seven day trading, no online, so business was easier to manage. Over 50 years many, many people have worked here with us. I would like to thank them for their contribution to the success of the business. Also, my present staff for their dedication to the shop and customers and keeping the show on the road. There are three people I would like to mention, Vincent O'Byrne and Mara Hogan. They were pillars of the shop for many, many years. Both have passed on. May they rest in peace, but they are not forgotten. <clears throat> Connie Dunn, for over 40 years, was a major part of our operation and managed the ladies' department with authority. She was well appreciated by the customers. Unfortunately, she's unable to be here tonight. May I say a very big thank you to all our customers, past and present, for their patronage over a long period. This is a special time for our business. Special thanks also to John Murphy, Christy McQuinn and Mary for their extraordinary amount of filming and research to bring this presentation to fruition. Over um, many times I was advised to pull the old shop asunder above and modernize it to increase the, the footfall. I didn't and today I'm mighty glad that I didn't. <laughs> She is the old shop there, stands there, Queen of Mill Street, <laughs> since what, 1830, is that what you said? 1830. Long, long time. May she stand for much longer. <laughs> Thanks to everybody. I'm amazed at the number of people. I'm a little bit gobsmacked that there's so many people here tonight. And it's a wonderful tribute to the shop. Not to me, but to the shop. And you know, you look up there, it's amazing that you can just look up and she's right there in front of us. Yeah. But uh, the tribute is the shop, not to me. I loved working there, I loved the old shop, and I can hate to see it, anything that happened to it. Thank you all. Ladies and gentlemen, anybody who wants to buy a copy of the film, it's available just across here on my right. Can you arrive?